Hey YouTube, I'm Jimmy. So oil has been crashing over the past two months. Here's what the chart looks like. And as you can see, oil has fallen from a peak of over $76 a share back in early October to now just over $50. Now the question I had to ask myself was, is there an opportunity here? And I found four of them that have fantastic dividends. So just so we're all on the same page regarding oil and the industry as a whole, there are three main parts to the oil industry, upstream, midstream, and downstream. Upstream is where they pull oil and gas out of the ground. Midstream is when they transport it and they store it. And then downstream is when they refine it and ultimately when they go ahead and sell it to gas stations, places like that. Now, as you can imagine, falling crude oil prices like we've seen over the past few months, it really hurts the upstream market. And this makes sense because the cost to get oil out of the ground doesn't really change based on the price of oil. Ultimately, what happens is the profit margins get squeezed for these companies. Well, to illustrate this, this is XLE. This is an oil and gas ETF. They have a lot of the big names in it, like Exxon, Chevron, ConocoPhillips, companies like that. And what we can see is that they are highly correlated to the price of oil. Now, they don't necessarily move up quite as high as oil prices do, or they don't swing quite as low as oil prices do, so they're a bit less volatile, but they move very similarly. Now, this ETF has a dividend yield of about 3%, which isn't bad. But if we're going to buy this ETF, well, what we're doing is we're really betting on the price of oil. And I'm not sure I'm comfortable with predicting where I think oil is going to go over the next few months, either up or down. So to me, that's a bit too risky for just 3%. But now what about midstream? AMLP is the largest midstream ETF. And as you can see when we switch to this chart, that although they pulled back when the price of oil fell, they're not nearly as correlated to the price of oil as XLE was. And this is actually where I want to focus because AMLP has a dividend yield of about 8.5% right now, which is awesome and certainly an interesting approach to getting a nice dividend. Now, why is midstream so different than upstream? Well, when it comes to the price of oil, midstream companies get paid a often a contracted rate for moving that oil. And the price of the oil that they're shipping usually has little impact on what they get paid. We can think of them as sort of the toll booth collectors of the oil industry. Okay, so oil prices fluctuate, but oftentimes many of those companies keep drilling. As long as they keep doing that, that oil must be transported to refineries by midstream companies keeping the midstream companies getting paid. Now, I like the 8.5% dividend yield from the ETF, but can we find companies that are either at this level or perhaps even better? I think so. So I actually found three companies that could offer a real opportunity for anybody interested in this type of dividend and giving themselves exposure to this type of holding in their portfolio. So if you love dividends, if you know anybody that loves dividends, send this video to them. The first company is Holly Energy Partners, ticker symbol HEP. They have a current dividend yield of a bit over 9%. To illustrate what I was talking about a moment ago, this chart here. This chart came from the first page of their presentation, the most recent presentation that they had. The gray bars are dividends. They call them distributions. And the blue line is the price of oil that we already saw. Now, just to double check their ability to pay these distributions going forward, this is a chart of revenue. And as you can see, it's been nice and steady over the past few years. And here's net income. Now, it's not quite as nice and steady as revenue was, but over the past five years, it's been pretty good. Now, you may ask, how is it possible that these companies are paying such high dividends relative to their size? After all, HEP is only a $3 billion company, and it's all about their structure. These companies are set up as master limited partnerships, or MLPs for short. And what makes an MLP unique is two things. First, they don't pay any corporate income tax as long as they pay out most of their net income as dividends or distributions. Generally, it's got to be above 90% of net income. No taxes equals higher dividends. And the second thing is actually a pain. And technically, you're not buying a stock, you're buying into a partnership. Fundamentally, it's the same thing, but that's the reason they call it distributions, because it's a partnership. But the real key to that is that as investors, when we invest in this partnership, we don't buy stock, we buy units. When you buy a unit, you get a K-1 form, and that K-1 form has to be filed in your taxes. It makes doing your taxes a bit more complicated. Now, it's not the worst thing in the world, 
but I just want to point out that it is a pain. To me, the added effort when you're filing your taxes of having to say, oh, I got this K-1 and these are the dividends I received, makes it worth, it's completely worth it when you find a company that's paying a dividend of almost 10%. Now, the next company is Energy Transfer, ticker symbol ET. Now, they're one of the biggest players in the midstream space at about a $38 billion market cap. Energy Transfer is once again an MLP, and they have the same tax advantages that Holly had, being that they don't have to pay corporate income taxes as long as they pay most of their money out as dividends. Their current dividend yields about 8.3%. Now, I like this company in our trio of individual companies because they're larger and more diversified. Now, Energy Transfer Partners and Energy Transfer Equity recently completed a merger which simplifies their business, giving us the new company of Energy Transfer. Currently, they own about 71,000 miles of pipeline, and as you can see from their revenue chart, it looks like they've been doing pretty good over the past few years as far as revenue is concerned. The green bars are analyst ex expectations, so it looks like analysts are expecting them to continue to grow their revenue. When we switch to net income, we can see that they had a big dip in 2017, but expectations are that they'll recover next year and continue to grow going forward. Currently, analyst expectations are that their dividends will continue to steadily grow for the next few years. So, that serves our needs quite well. Our third and final company is EQM Midstream Partners, ticker symbol EQM. Their trailing 12-month dividend yield is about 9.3%, although they're expected to pay out a dividend yield of a bit over 10% based on today's price and analyst expectations of dividends over the next few quarters. Now, EQM recently merged with Rice Midstream, and EQM is now focusing on building their Mountain Valley Pipeline. They have stated their desire to increase their distributions by about 15% a year, which makes EQM a nice addition to this group of stocks. And another interesting thing is that they actually focus on shipping natural gas, not oil. They're located mostly in Pennsylvania, and I think that adds a nice addition to this group. Now, assuming we invested the same dollar amount in each company, well, our yield would end up being about 9.1% based on today's prices. And that assumes that dividends stay exactly the same as they were in the last quarter. These types of companies typically increase their distributions each year. The key for us to watch with any one of these companies is, do they cut their distributions? That would be a killer to any one of these stocks. When I'm watching the news, that's the main thing I'm looking for do people think they might cut their, di their distributions? So, for some of us, the 8.5% that AMLP offers is plenty good. You'll get, you could get some capital appreciation if the entire group moves higher. Maybe that's plenty good for us. But for others that prefer to pick individual names and perhaps try to identify a company that has further capital appreciation potential and maybe get an even higher dividend yield, some of these companies might be ideal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you buy the ETF or would you prefer to pick an individual name that you think is maybe oversold and could really rally here? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. And thanks for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.